Hey, Forge fans, it's the Forge Audio Network. I'm Anthony Urcioli. It is Focus on Forge. Forge, very focused. After a 3 0 win over HFX Wanderers FC out in Halifax over the weekend, and with that win, uh, Forge has now outscored Halifax 7 0 in their last two matches at Wanderers Grounds, which is supposed to be one of the most difficult stadiums to play in. Calling that match was Adam Jenkins, play-by-play -play announcer at One Soccer, and he joins us now. Adam, I, I can't say I'm surprised by Forge's effort against Halifax. I am surprised that there wasn't more uh, pushback, just judging by how the last match in Halifax went between these two clubs. Uh, you know, To outscore Halifax 7-0 in your last two matches um, at Wanderers Ground, which is supposed to be one of the toughest places to play, it speaks to Forge's quality, but also speaks to Halifax. Just, I mean, we could speculate, and certainly coaches and players did after the match, but just something was a little off with the Wanderers. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have to look a whole lot further, in my opinion, than midfield. I think no Gagnon Lapare, no Rampersad was the biggest difference in the entire game. Forge's midfield dominated, and there, there was some shoddy defending. I don't think that's uh, unfair to Halifax at times. I mean, Mateo Restrepo is still getting back into form. Of course, the red card was just the unfortunate cherry on the cake for them, but still being without Peter Schala has been a difficulty for them. It was good to see him get a 10-minute run, but it was just one team was better than the other on the day, as, as much as it boils down to. Yeah, uh, post-match, one, th one of the things I love about this sport is that you don't get this level of honesty from coaches and players after a match in any other, right. any other sport, uh, Stephen Hart, um, who else, Christian Oxner, the keeper spoke as well after the match. And it was, it, it, I mean, it, it Hart literally just said we didn't run. I mean, you're playing soccer and you didn't run. There's just no excuse for it. And I think they would have accepted the result had they put in a bigger effort, but forge was allowed to pretty much do whatever they wanted. It seemed like, yeah, it's an interesting spot that Steven is in right now because like, I, I think the assessment after 3-0 was a little bit more unfair than 4-0 was, but they're they're in a bit of damage control right now because the results just aren't acceptable for that supporters group. And I don't think Halifax is a market where if the team doesn't make the playoffs in X amount of years or, or what have you, that the supporters are going to abandon them. It's not one of those. And there are some markets in the CPL where that would be the case. But what I think Steven's trying to do is shoulder a lot of the blame, which I don't think he deserves because he's not out there running. But at the same time, like admitting that it's not been good enough. And I think sometimes that's all, I shouldn't say that's all supporters want to hear, but it's important for supporters to hear that the the staff isn't accepting what was put on the pitch. And it was just the case. I think when the first goal went in, um, there was some anxiety. Like there were a few times in that match that was as quiet as I've ever heard Wanderers Ground where they remembered mm -hmm. how quickly got carried away. And I think that was one of Oxner's best performances in his Halifax career. To be fair to him, it could have been a lot worse, but they're undermanned. I mean, Joao Morelli was a big loss, but they you, you can't, if you're Halifax, be without Joao Morelli, be without Gagnon Leppard, be without Rampersad. It's just not good enough. And Daniels, they don't really know where to put him, where he can be most efficient. Seems like he needs to be in midfield, but at that point, um, you sort of miss some of his attacking quality. And then as soon as the, the second one went in from Noah Jensen, it, it was game over and Halifax knew it. And it, it almost became a, a scrimmage out there for Forge. It, it was unfortunate for, for Wanderers fans, but I'm sure absolutely delightful for Forge supporters. Yeah. And uh, just one last thing on, on Oxner after the match, when he, he had one of the best lines I had heard and it was, you know, he was asked about the, 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 guys that were playing and filling in for some of the starters and you know if it held him back a bit and he just said you know those guys that got an opportunity are the same guys that might complain they're not getting enough, enough minutes or getting enough playing time and they were given that opportunity and didn't perform i thought that was a really an honest way of of assessing what happened and just you know the lack of effort now you mentioned noah jensen He's been on the radar of Forge fans for most of the year and th those similarities to kyle becker always kind of come up He's been a leader throughout his career, young career in college. He was a captain. And I think we're, we're looking at the kind of, you know, you look at the two teams and that was the difference. We talk about depth and versatility in this league. You know, Forge had some guys out, needed some guys to step in. 
not only did they step in, they didn't even miss a beat. And Noah Jensen, a prime example, who got, uh, I believe, his second goal of the season now. It was the second, and he was impressive. He um, he was one of those, I, I don't want to call him an unknown commodity, but when I saw him playing at Azteca, I was like, okay, this is bold from Bobby. And I understand that at that point, they knew the tie was out of their hands, and it, it was important for Bobby to get some young guys some minutes, but he didn't look out of place. He didn't look daunted. And I think there's an expectation if Smirniotis is going to call your name and, and bring you onto the field, you better be ready and you better not show any fear. And, and Noah certainly doesn't do that. I, I don't know that I'm ready to say the next Kyle Becker, but I think I use Kyle Becker light um, in the broadcast because he, he does a lot of the similar things and he's getting his moments. He's aggressive where he needs to be. The stats back it up. He like the shots in the final third, the entries into the final third. And I really enjoyed seeing, even though he was playing at the 10 and Kyle was kind of holding a bit more, he was a, a conduit a lot of times where sort of the ball would be worked out of the back, whether it's Becker getting it, whether it's Sissoko getting it, but Jensen would understand when he needed to make the runs into the box to open up the wings or when he was going to receive the pass get it out wide and then keep running forward and, and putting himself in a good position. So he was very, very dis, dif, um, offensively sound in the match. And I think that was really important for him. And I mean, it, he won a tackle. It wasn't like he needed to do a lot defensively, but he went into a couple of them. He won one of them and it, it's positive for him. Kyle Becker is not going to play forever. I mean, 100 is the in the next match for Kyle Becker, which is absolutely outstanding. Um, whether... Noah's able to stay with Forge before someone else poaches him and, and gives him more of a defined role because Kyle's not going anywhere anytime soon. But I think of of all of the newcomers, of course, Sissoko is the one that really stands out for me. But you got to put Jensen up there with the Ramas as well. He's He's been great and he's still so, so young. Yeah, and it, the Forge attack and why it's so difficult to defend is, is I mean, you saw it on, on display. Obviously, they have the players in the middle that can, that can move the ball and that can create offense. But the wings, I mean, the way the the fullbacks and wingers work in tandem, whether it's, you know, Schwanier and and Rama or it's Borges and Morgan, it just there's a cohesion where it doesn't matter where you want to try and emphasize your defense against Forge. They this season, especially and over the last you know few weeks, they can beat you in, in so many different ways. And it's going to be difficult for any club to be able to just hold forge to under two goals a match at this point it looks like yes the the matchup with the wings is going to be team dependent i think there's some where i would have said york and forge is actually more of a matchup than people give it credit for with abzi and ensa mm -hmm. but now we know that abzi's he's done in the canadian premier league after after wednesdays which isn't even the cpl anymore so I think Angus is going to have to to spend his money well from from whatever that sale is there, if there's even much. But does Eduardo Jesus step in? Is he able to to sort of play? But you can go up and down the CPL. There's not many that can keep up with Tristan and David when they're at the peak of their form, when they're they're playing as confident as they are. This has been a much better rebound season for Tristan. This is 2019 Tristan Borges, if not better. And David Chouinier, I think the first couple of years, he's always been good. But with the the players in front of him on the depth chart, he wasn't always getting consistent, sustained starts. And I think that would affect him in moments. He sort of, he absorbed the moniker of or the king of CONCACAF, as I like to call him, because he was always so good in CONCACAF League. But, and of course he has his goal in, in CONCACAF Champions League now, but he wasn't always getting the the starts and the stats in, in league play. And I think that was the next step for him. And Bobby's been very um, complimentary of his, of his performances as he should be. He's as much as Manny Aparicio has been getting a lot of MVP shouts prior to the injury. I, I don't think we're long away from putting shout Chouinier into that category because he's scoring the brilliant goals. We know he has more brilliant goals in him, but how he's been playing distributor, that final pass that there's, there has been nobody more entertaining to watch than Sissoko Chouinier right now. That, that first pass from Sissoko, which is going to give him the hockey assist, but nothing in league play. And then Schwanier, whether he takes it on himself, if you're a defender, you have to respect that he can shoot. Then you give him that little bit of extra respect that you need to for his shot, and he's found somebody else. And whether it's Campbell, whether it's Pasillas, I mean, Jensen the other day, Welshman, the, the, the attack is there, which it wasn't at the beginning of the year. And Forge is playing confident. I think the only thing you can complain about if you're Forge right now is the fact that the CPL is not single table. Because if it was, I think we wouldn't be long from saying it's a two-horse race for the North Star Shield. So uh, the playoffs make that interesting, but I, I don't think there's a single thing in – forge land that you wouldn't be excited about other than the fact you won't have Sissoko for the next game on a, a YCA suspension.
Yeah, and you know the Sissoko is interesting too because he, you know, he he was playing fullback mm-hmm. early this season just due to injuries, and then Rama comes in, and I mean he comes in, he he he's not even, I mean, he, he was playing out in in the UK. Um, you know, he talks about how he struggles with his English. I actually think he's he's doing pretty well, but he jumps into a situation he's unfamiliar with, and he just hits the ground running. The, his style, that the physicality, he's also been uh, been able to connect plays and contribute offensively with some passes. And I mean, I don't think anyone, maybe at least not here, no one really knew who Rama was, but now you add him, Sissoko can move back into the middle and things have really taken shape and there's a lot of guys out. So Bobby, he always says it's a great problem to have, but he does have some difficult decisions to make, um, you know, as we approach the, the middle of the season here. Yeah, well, I promise Rama that his English is better than my Albanian or Greek would be. So I think he's doing just fine with his with his second right. or probably fourth language. I don't even know with that man. But <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised actually at first I, in hearing Bobby say he's the best right back in the CPL. I was like, okay, hang on a second. How long has he been here? And then you think about his performances. You think about his quality. You think about all the things he's done since arriving and, and now being deployed at right back. And I go... He's right. There is nobody better at that position uh, right now. And be, like you get, I always sort of deferred that to a, um, and so I thought was always underrated at that position, but Rama's got a more complete game. It's mm-hmm. what I like about watching him play is we know he's very gifted offensively, but on the counter, when, when you get forward, you either have to have the, the pace and the, the stamina, the fitness to get back into position. But when you're backtracking, you cannot be careless in your tackles. You can't leave your feet too much if you're not sure that you're going to get the ball. And, and he wins most of his tackles standing up. I think it's been brilliant. And you sort of think about, okay, what's Bobby's best 11? I don't think we're far from it. I think Kritzen's in for Owolabi Bellowu. I don't know that I touch anything else right now. Is it Campbell? Is it Pasias who starts in a, in a CPL final for doing the hypothetical or a one match winner take all? I think at the moment with this team, those are your two questions. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see Alex be able to get forward again and play in the position that he wants to be, but he's been too good at center back. I don't know how you move him. So the, the only people I think that might be a little bit nervous or hot under the collar right now are the players who can't seem to get to full fitness, whether that's Grant, whether that's Samuel. I mean, there's still roles for them in this team, but with the run of form forges on, I don't know what you change if you're Smyrniotis. Like the the club's ability to retool on the fly, whether that's from Sigma or bringing Rama in, as you rightfully point out, from from destinations unknown. You know, who is this guy? Mm. Oh, he's one of the best defenders in the CPL. Fantastic. There's another check for Forge. It's probably very frustrating for supporters of other clubs and for the neutral, for the Forge supporter. It's it's very impressive to see how they're able to adjust and once they find the formula. It's not just flash in the pan. It's it's continued success, and they're gonna they're not gonna see Halifax for a little bit now. Um, so maybe the, we won't see as many goals being scored, especially with the depleted Halifax side. But I mean, by the time they get back to level with everyone on matches played, they'll be in first or second. I have no doubt about that. Yeah, you mentioned the two horse race. So I mean, let, let's let's look at the table. I looked at the top four yesterday and thought maybe. I think these four are probably the top four on the league right now. Calvary, Pacific, Atletico, and Forge. But then, you know, Atletico lose against Edmonton, who, I mean, I don't, if you, if you unless you are an Ottawa supporter, um, you're probably pretty happy to see Edmonton finally get a win. I think it's deserved. I mean, they've come so close and they are working really hard. And there's some limitations in that roster, but it was nice to see Edmonton get three points. So now I don't know. I mean, Atletico could, could drop out of that. When you say two horse race, I assume you mean Calvary and Forge. Is there a third club that could maybe play spoiler or maybe just come on late when they get healthier or get some bodies back? I think third is it's Atletico Ottawa. I mean, I don't think the loss to Edmonton is um, what's the word I'm looking for is a, is a direct reflection of solely negativity to Atletico Ottawa. Someone at some point was going to be the team that Edmonton got their first win again. But I think Ottawa's very, very good. Having said that, 
there are tiers in the CPL right now. If Forge and Cavalry are tier one, I Forge supporters are not going to like this. I had Cavalry as my champions preseason um, just because I think it's they're due with the timing. And, and sometimes that's all the hunts you need when you're making your preseason predictions. But to mm-hmm. me, Forge Cavalry, they are the top tier. And, and I think there's a gap still. That's why I made the comment about the single table where I think there's some supporters that be like, oh, if only. Because that's, right. in my opinion, by season's end, those probably going to be several points between those two and the rest. Ottawa's in that second tier and uh, the comfortably in the second tier Pacific's in that second tier. I had Valor as a playoff team before the season started. Their offense is almost as concerning as York's. Um, I just don't know, especially losing a key piece like Abzi, if York are going to be able to hang in there long enough. Now we have to remind ourselves the season's not yet 35% of the way through. Having said that, it doesn't take long for these swings to go on. I think Halifax is really hurting right now. They're going to need to put some runs together, like two or three wins in a row to at some point in the season to really keep pace. Otherwise they're going to drop off. But I I think we know Edmonton situation. Um, We're very happy for them. Obviously they're, they're rightfully like they're not in a poor position. They should probably have a few more points to me. Then you got the Halifax York in that tier um, Valor, they need to prove it, but I do think they belong in that tier with Pacific and with Ottawa, like we saw them do the 6 1. Um, and and we, uh, we're almost going to get to the point where we have to stop talking about 6 1 because we haven't seen the goal since then. So, mm-hmm. um, yes, so that's a very long winded way of saying I think there's three tiers right now. You put Forge and Cavalry, and I don't even know who I would take in a one match winner take. I think it would depend on where they're playing, the conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Then Pacific, Ottawa. Valor's on the fringe, and then there's that third tier. And it's not that I think York can't get to tier two, but at some point you got to score goals. And I think Canadian Championship for them on Wednesday is going to be massive. If they get through, it's of course going to be a massive story. They're the first CPL team to play all three Major League Soccer sides. And e- even if it doesn't go their way, I even mentioned this on uh, the Newsroom podcast earlier, we saw what happened to Forge after they got thoroughly dismantled in the Canadian Championship. They've been a completely different mm-hmm. version, a completely better version of themselves since I think win or lose, like this is going to be the kick that York needs. They just got to start with scoring some goals here. Yeah. That four, nothing win against Halifax for forge. And then that three, nothing loss to Montreal really just changed the trajectory of the mm-hmm. season. And the forge club was upset with that performance and they've right, righted those wrongs. Um, if you're listening to CPL soccer or watching CPL soccer on one soccer, you're probably hearing Adam Jenkins. Sorry voices. About that. <laughs> one of the, one of the best of the biz. Thanks so much for joining us as always and uh, enjoy. Enjoy. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Always a pleasure, Anthony. Anytime. All right. Forge FC with a, a bit of a break, at least in terms of matches, they'll still be working. Of course, preparing for valor. That is uh, not until next Wednesday, June 29th. Valor making the trip to Tim Hortons Field to take on Forge, and then uh, Forge will have another home match that weekend. So, a bit of a layoff, you know, 10 days off or so in between games, and then they'll play two games uh, in a span of five days. So, play Valor on the 29th, then they will host Atletico Ottawa on July 3rd. Tickets still available for both. I'll be there. I hope to see you there. Remember, keep it locked to the Forge Audio Network. However you get your podcasts, uh, you can get us on YouTube, the official website of Forge we are on, as well as Forge's social media. So many different avenues to get the Forge Audio Network and to get all the Forge content, the most Forge content you can get anywhere. Coming up, uh, we'll take you behind the beard with head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis. And uh, we have some other fun things planned this week. So uh, so keep checking, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that fun stuff. We'll talk to you soon. Anthony Urcioli and Focus on Forge. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts to the Forge Audio Network.